My name is Raquel Garza. We're here interviewing Mr. Jose Aguilera for the Voces Oral History Project. Today is Saturday, uh, April the 9th. We are in Uvalde, Texas at Southwest Texas Junior College. Mr. Aguilera, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate your time. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, if you, let's, so let's start at the beginning. You and I talked a little bit about your being born in McAllen. Yes. And you said that you got here as fast as you could. Yes, well actually, yeah, my family moved here. Uh, um, golly, I guess I was, well my mom tells me that I was about six, seven months old and I grew up in the uh, Uvalde, uh, my White Mines area that's about 18 miles west of towards Del Rio. Uh, and then I, we moved back in town when I was about nine years old. So tell me about your um, early life living out there in that White Mines area. Did you uh, start school there? No, uh, we bust into uh, um, Uvalde, uh, school, the school district here. Um, I went to uh, Rob Elementary, uh, um, then I, I guess I did all the uh, regular school. Uh, uh, that time they were sort of segregated. Uh, you know, we all of us looked alike. We went to uh, Rob, and all the other kids went to either Benson or Anthon back then. The two other elementary schools here. And uh, again, I went through uh, all the steps till I got to high school. Yes. So you mentioned that the schools were segregated at that time. Do you like? Do you remember? Like, could you tell? Like, did you think about it, or is that something you thought about later? Actually, uh, the, it, the, I guess discrimination was uh, active here. I guess a long time before I was. We were, I was my knowledge, I guess, uh, but I do remember some stuff from uh, when, uh, back then. Um, I guess the first thing I remember being sort of discriminated against or looked at it differently is when one day uh, <clears throat> my dad was going to be voting, and at that time they voted at the West Main School, which was on uh, uh, Highway 90 here. Um, and uh, we dropped off my mom at the uh, at the, at the um, some store or somewhere. And I was a little kid, but I remember we came in and uh, we went and got in line for you know the voting thing, and and uh, <clears throat> there was this uh, two uh, anchor guys in front of us, and uh, they got you know to the voting registration thing and. and the other guy, there's another guy there. Says, hey, Bill, how are you? And then he goes, Well, hey, Mr. Carson, or Mr. Williams, whatever, how are you? And then my dad came up there and he, says, and he didn't even shook our hand, you know, his, or his hand. He just said, uh, It's a dollar, senor. In other words, they had to pay a poll tax. You to remember the poll tax? And, uh, well, my dad paid his dollar, and, and it wasn't much, but back then it was a dollar, it was a dollar, you know. So, um, we you know, we went there and voted, and we, we left. I asked my dad, why are they uh, charging, you know? And the dad said, well, that, that's, you know, that's that's the way it is. You know, you got to pay to vote. And I kept them, I kept them behind the back of my head there, and I said, well, why didn't they check, check your hand, you know? <laughs> and uh, my dad said, well, I don't know. There's a, they're they locals, you know, they live in them. It's not a castle. But okay, so. But uh, that was that was the first time that I, I noticed that, that we, we were sort of different there. So you said you were about seven? I was about, uh, no, I was about, yeah, I guess about five, six, maybe. I was a little kid, yeah. yeah. Um, did your dad ever talk about that, like having to save up to pay his poll taxes? Like, did he ever like tell you anything about it like why it was important like why he uh, wanted to do it no but we, you know doing uh, our family gatherings there we they used to talk i i remember my parents talking to uh, uh you know their compadres and stuff and i remember when they we used to say that uh, 
there was restaurants here in the area that uh, you couldn't go to. Uh, there were signs out in the uh, door there. Uh, it says that no no Mexicans or niggers allowed. Um, I I uh, have uh, other memories that uh, the school used to have uh, uh, back then, uh, like the first graders, um, uh, the first six weeks, they give you a little movie pass, and you go to the movies. You know, you uh, you would, uh, and the second graders, you go the second six weeks, and you know so on. Uh, and I remember going to the uh, theater here in town, and, and uh, the theater was also sort of segregated. Uh, uh, they set us uh, um, or s told us to sit at, in the balcony up on top. And uh, this happened, uh, I guess, when we were little, it was a lot of fun, actually. We went up there and threw popcorn down and stuff. And, <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, you know, I, I didn't realize that until later and everybody else said in the bottom we were up there you know and um, there, there was little little evidence things that sort of actually piled t together I guess or, or, or they um, sort of came together and um, added a little fuel to this to walk out thing that we had yeah. there was another instance that uh, I remember quite a bit and that was when I was in Rob's school um, we were uh, in, in PE or, you know, a recess, they call it back then. And uh, we were running around and stuff. And and uh, I remember uh, I said something in Spanish. And uh, the teacher had uh, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, she called me and said, hey, come here, boy. And I said, okay, I went up there. I thought she was, you know, uh, you know talk to me or something, you know. So I went out there and. She grabbed me by the ear and she took me up to the wall and she drew uh, on, on the building, the wall of the building there and she drew a circle there and she told me to put my nose on that circle and she put it right at the uh, height that I had to sort of tippy toe on there to put my nose on that circle there as punishment because I was speaking Spanish. Uh, and I was there the whole half hour, hour or whatever we had in recess. and. Uh, that sort of sunk in me quite a bit. Uh, I didn't understand why they were doing it, but they they did that, and, and uh, as time went on, um, I had another instance when I was for speaking Spanish. Uh, we 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 were practicing in football, and uh, God, we were we went, finished practice and we took a shower and stuff. I say, hey, you know, uh, I was talking to one of the guys that said something in Spanish. And the coach overheard us, and, and he gave us two, leak, two licks uh, to each one because we were speaking Spanish. Uh, uh, and that was in high school? In junior high. Junior high. Junior high. Yeah, it was junior high, yes. And, and, and you know, stuff like that kept, uh, uh, when uh, this walkout thing happened, uh, you know, all those, for a few of us, it was, it went back for further than just the, uh, or the 1970 deal, yes. Yeah, of course. So did your, do you remember your parents like ever talking to you about that? Like did they, um, like have any opinion, your mother, your father have any opinions about um, the way that you were being treated or, or you know, society at the time? Like did they ever Actually, um, they didn't accept it, but uh, my dad would say that well, one day it's going to change. You know, one day it was going to. Oh, we, it was. Uh, there was supposed to be. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be that way. Uh, you know, but it, it wasn't really discrimination as far as uh, uh, out. I, I guess you could say the discrimination out loud. You know, it was sort of a, you know, underhand. But it, well, there, there was discrimination here. Yes. Um, but no, it wasn't really any mention of it. Uh, um, we just kept on going, and, and uh, as a matter of fact, that's why we sort of stayed here in Texas because uh, my f uncles and stuff they all went up north, you know, to Minnesota. And I had one uncle who went down to California, and, and uh, you know, and uh, actually we went out there one summer, and we didn't like it. 
came back. But uh, that's why we usually hung around here, or we did, man. Our parents did because uh, of the, uh, my, my dad didn't speak, I mean, he was a, a citizen, you know, he was born in Texas, but he didn't uh, speak uh, that well, you know, he didn't speak any, most nothing in English. Uh, he had went to he had a second grade education and uh, they expelled him from school because they, they broke a window and blamed it on him and we didn't have any money to pay for the window so they expelled him and uh, my mom was a Mexican citizen uh, but uh, we didn't there was really no no uh, big deal about it just yeah. um. Just real quick, because I haven't had a chance to ask on the pre-interview form, but what was your father's name? My dad was Dolores Aguilera, yes. And your mother's name? My mother was Paula Hernandez Aguilera. And you said your mother was from Mexico? Yes. Where was she from? Um, she was actually from Sabinas, Mexico. Um, the, their family moved down to uh, Tamaulipas, uh, across the border from uh, Rio Grande, I think it is. So uh, uh, I remember that, and uh, uh, we used to go down there mm -hmm. a few times. Yeah, they'd fly across the border. So. And um, your father, where was he born? My brother, uh, my father was born in Yorktown, Texas, which is uh, over here by Seguin, I think. And um, did your father serve in World War II? No, he didn't. No, my uncles did, but not my dad, no. Okay. Um, you know, Dr. Ribas Rodriguez was mentioning earlier um, that, you know, the guys that served in World War II, um, that was a kind of like the first time that they weren't segregated, like they served with the Anglos. So I didn't know if like some of your dad's attitudes um, came from that experience, like where he knew that he was just as good as everybody else because he'd been mm -hmm. treated that way. Um, did he ever ever talk to you about that, ever talk to you about um, just that idea? You had mentioned, you know, him saying that, you know, things will change, like it will. Yeah. Well, no, um, but uh, my, uh, I had uncles that served in, 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 in uh, most of the wars. Uh, and uh, well, I had one uncle who was served in World War II, and um, he was, um, he served in a unit that was uh, actually all all uh, Mexican American or all uh, Latinos, uh, uh, except for the officers, you know. But yeah. uh, in they they fought in uh, in uh, Italy. I think it was their main uh, campaigns were Italy and uh, France. I guess I don't know. It was, it was uh, back in forty three. I think it was. Yes. But did they ever talk to you about that? Like just like growing up, I mean, you, you've already talked to me about how you noticed as a young man that, you know, things were different for you, that you weren't treated in the same way. Did they ever talk to you about that? Or was it just stuff you noticed on mm, your own? No, there wasn't really that much mentioned. Um, uh, no, I, I remember my, my dad, we used to... Uh, yeah, well, he didn't get mad, but sort of got a little upset. And up, uh, I guess you could say upset and corrected at any time uh, anybody would uh, be talking, and, and they would be talking. Uh, the conversation would include an Anglo person, and it was says, "No, porque el americano." And uh, my dad said, "Well, you know, why are you telling him americano?" You know, says, and. Uh, you know, just because he's got blue eyes and white skin, he's, he, you know, an Americano is not, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's a nationality, it's a citizenship, it's not a race. And uh, some people, you know, get mad and I can't do the Americano. Well, actually he was, or well, we are, you know. Uh, but back then, uh, and still some people still do that, you know, some, uh, still some people says, no, que el americano, que es americano. And uh, even though they don't know that guy may be a Russian or, <laughs> you know, a, a light-colored Italian or something, you know. Um, but that, that, that uh, you know, and, and of course when all this was going on, it, 
they weren't Anglo or anything, they were gringos, you know. <laughs> we called them gringos. Uh, but uh, th that was that was about, you know, the only time it was mentioned, actually. So you said um, that your, uh, you grew up speaking English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Was it um, Spanish at home and English in school? Or? Correct. Okay. And you said your parents didn't speak or hardly any English? Oh, uh, my dad spoke some. Uh, my mom didn't speak any. No. I was her translator. <laughs> what know. was that like for you? Um, well, it was, it was uh, sometimes I got the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the the words right or the you know the, it, it it's just the uh, uh, you, know, you know how it, you say something and it, it meant something in Spanish or it has a different meaning and stuff. Uh, uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, I guess we we got along. I translated as best I could. I guess. Yeah. Do you ever remember having to? Um like make something nicer or say something in a different way, like what was being said versus like what you told your parents was being said? No, no, I was always told to speak my mind and, and uh, by my dad. My dad was, uh, 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 I, I really admired my dad. Uh, he had, uh, he, uh, I guess brought me up thinking, uh, or not to think of anything that I couldn't do. I mean, I, I, I could do anything I wanted to, as long as I, as long as I had the uh, you know the ability to do it, I could. So um, you had mentioned like your dad paying poll tax, your dad, um, you know, working as a mechanic. I think you told me in the pre-interview form. Um, so, I mean, he sounds like a very strong person. Mm. Yes, yes, he is. What do you remember most about your dad? Golly. Uh, well, uh, my dad was my dad when I was a little kid. And uh, he was uh, my teacher, I guess, when I was growing up, when I was two years old, I guess, on, to about. 18, I guess, and after that, uh, he was my, my he was my best friend. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, he uh, <clears throat> he passed away uh, 1980, I think it was. Uh, uh, he didn't get to see me graduate from college, uh, but uh, uh, Well, he, he was a good man. Yeah. And what about your mom? Golly, my mom was my honor. Uh, God, there's nothing I can say about my mom. I mean, she, uh, uh, golly, but she was my mom. <laughs> yeah. Just very supportive, very. Well, yes, it was a very loving person. Um, she taught me uh, a lot about uh, about life itself. You know, she was she was very uh, very uh, loving person. Yes, she was. Do you have a favorite memory? Um, I guess they all are. Uh, golly, not a favorite, not just a favorite favorite, but uh, I guess they all are. I mean, she's. Uh, She's been, she's, God, she passed away in 82, and, uh, God, you know, I guess, uh, she's still there for me. Yeah. So, um, tell me a little bit about, you know, growing up, like, here in Uvalde. Like, you told me that, you know, you remembered some of these early instances of segregation, um, that you remembered, um, what else do you remember about the town? Like, what else do you remember about it? Um, <clears throat> well, I remember it was a nice, quiet little town. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we used to 
cruise down Main Street <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, Evans Street. Those are two big, or Getty. Those are the two uh, biggest streets here. And, but now it, it's 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 uh, grown quite a bit. Uh, golly, uh, I remember uh, on my street there, uh, uh, Elizabeth Street. That used to be a, a, when my dad bought that property. There was a uh, dirt street. Uh, uh, and you know, it, that's changed quite a bit. And you know, you could sleep with your uh, sort of your uh, doors unlocked and stuff. And now you can't do that. You know, it's just it's just too hard. Um, we have a lot of different neighbors, uh, um, people that you don't really know who they are. But they, I mean, you know, it doesn't doesn't really. Uh, do you think it was matter, but uh, there there are people who are um, who uh, well we we had some had some uh, raids police raids down there quite a bit, and Elizabeth Street is uh, way down the west side there, and I kind of back there, and uh, you know uh, sometimes it's hard to get there. I mean, if you ever ask directions to find. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Street. And you can always ask a police officer. They all they all been there. You know, so they can, yeah, oh yeah, they can tell you. They can tell you where it is at. Yeah. So that's more recently, though. Oh uh, yes, well yes, recently they had some drug issues there, and oh, uh, people have been uh, uh, arrested and stuff. We even had a uh, when we worked in San Antonio, uh, my family uh, was there, but they had a uh, a uh, I guess a federal uh, helicopter or a federal raid or helicopters came in. DEA and FBI and all of them came by. So, wow. So that was pretty neat. They arrested a whole bunch of people that day. I think it was 60 people. I think it was, it was pretty bad. But and that, that is a change over what, you know, what I grew up with. You know, I mean, it was a nice little town. And, uh, you know, we knew everybody. Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, only a couple well, H E B, uh, the main store here, but now um, it's either H E B or Walmart. But those were the you know the main, uh, and uh, a whole bunch of little mom and dad stores, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Do you think people were friendlier back then? Oh yes, yes, yes. Right now, I, I have a neighbor there that's, uh, he's a. Uh, uh, Actually, he's an illegal guy. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, we know this because of uh, you know the, what uh, they talk to other neighbors there. But um, you know, we have a problem with him. Not only us, but all the neighborhoods there, because uh, uh, he goes out there and he uh, he plays uh, his he drinks a lot, I guess, and goes out there and parties, and which we all do. You know, that's that's not our problem. And music, well, I. I don't think there's nobody who enjoys music more than I do. I mean, I I made a living in music, and and uh, but this guy goes out there and he turns on his stereo, and he turns to full blast. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, well, I call it circus music. It's that you know banda music, mm -hmm. and uh, for me that's foreign. I mean, that's that's a foreign. That's really worse than heavy metal stuff. But uh, and he turns that way up. And, and, and I was, at times, uh, I was in my house watching TV, and the pictures would be rattling because oh, they uh, so were really loud, yes. So and I, I had to, you know, we had to call the cops and stuff. And they, they came in, after about the 30th time they came in, they finally told them, that, hey, you know, you need to either keep it down or we're going to, you know, I guess, side, side him or something. So he lately he has been he's been quiet down. He still parties a lot there, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he doesn't play that loud music anymore. Yeah. So, um, what do you remember about growing up? Like, do you have any favorite memories? Things y'all used to do? Uh, I know you said you played sports. You played football. Yes. Well, um, yeah. The, uh, that was my my main passion thing. Uh, football and and um, the sports. Uh, you know. School was okay when I was uh, when I was uh, when uh, right before all this stuff happened. Uh, uh, 
think I was, that was doing okay. Uh, uh, I did have, well, I guess we all had a little bit of, of uh, problems with teachers and stuff because that was one of the problems that um, that uh, helped fuel this thing. Is we didn't have um, enough Mexican-American teachers here, or really Latino teachers, Hispanic teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we had one teacher, uh, Gravil Tafoya, he was qualified uh, to teach uh, uh, government, or he was a government major actually in, in, in college. And they had him teaching Spanish. We had uh, uh, Mr. Reyes, uh, uh, he was, uh, I think he was a math teacher, and they had him teaching CHOP, you know. And uh, Mr. Vermea was another. Uh, also history major and he was teaching Spanish. Um, that was about all we had, uh, Hispanic teachers. Uh, um, and that was in the high school? Huh? That was in the high school? Yes, yes. Most of the, uh, uh, I guess 90% of the teachers were Anglo. And we had some good teachers. I mean, uh, you know, Mr. Sherman, he was good, Mr. Graves. I mean, we had some real good teachers. Uh, uh, and then we had some that weren't. I mean, they they were, you know, not that great as far as, uh, uh, and that was one of the one one of the uh, 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 causes that fueled this uh, walkout thing. That man out there, Mr. Garza, mm -hmm. he was a teacher in elementary school. He he was uh, actually he was fired from school, and that's why we walked out. Uh, he was he was. Uh, one of the guys are there. So it's, okay, so you mentioned earlier that you were involved with the Mexican American Youth Organization. In what now? With with Mayo. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How did you start uh, getting involved? With oh, that? that was an organization that we uh, uh, actually I started with them right after the uh, right around the walkout. I think it's when we uh, the different people who were. Uh, uh, or students actually uh, they just wanted to get together and, and uh, it, it was uh, actually uh, trying to uh, change some of the uh, regulation dress and coat stuff that the school had. Um, uh, there was a, I remember one of them was a, uh, you couldn't take a sack lunch or something to school or something like that, and we we changed that. And, um, why would you, it, you couldn't? Did, did, you, did you ever know why that rule was in place? No, not really. Um, not really. They there wasn't some actually very uh, weird the uh, um, rules that weren't. Uh, that, that affected us more than uh, like the, the Spanish do you think you, you couldn't speak Spanish uh, at all and uh, this was throughout like your entire education so elementary junior high high school you mm -hmm. weren't allowed to speak Spanish yeah uh, yes uh, and only only in Spanish class actually we were supposed to put it we were supposed to do that only in Spanish class but uh, uh, you know it was we were the majority in school. I mean, we were, golly, back then about 70, 75% of us were Hispanic. Uh, uh, there were some Anglos, and, and actually I didn't, uh, going back to uh, elementary school, I, I, didn't, I, didn't see, uh, I didn't see an Anglo student, or didn't have an Anglo student until I came to junior high. That wow. was the first time, time I saw, uh, you know, that I went, that was at junior high. Uh, all the schools sort of uh, uh, came together there. Uh, you know, the North Side schools, Benson and Anthem, which is all Anglo's, and uh, uh, our school, Rob, and the um, Catholic school there. They only went up. To, uh, uh, well, they went to eighth grade. Yeah, but high school they came. We came all together. But in junior high, all the uh, school district. Uh, uh, had yeah, one, uh, one junior a junior high, yes, and and that's where we that's where that's where I first uh, started going with the guys. Well, what was that like for you all of a sudden to be with 
other students with Anglo students? Uh, it, it was uh, I had some some uh, Anglo friends, you know. Had uh, I guess uh, there were some families that lived on the west side of town, uh, you know, that we hung around with, and and uh, I knew all the black kids here, you know, all five of them. <laughs> I knew all. Uh, we all grew up together uh, uh, on the west side, and we had a couple of guys there to, uh, who uh, grew up with us, and, and uh, they spoke Spanish just like we did. I mean, uh, uh, I know a good friend of mine, Kenneth Durham, uh, and he spoke Spanish just like I could. We could speak just you know uh, normally. Uh, and uh, some of those uh, white guys, uh, uh, David Fields, and. Uh, some of these other guys, I mean, they, they spoke uh, Spanish, you know, just like us, you know. Uh, and then it, it, was, it wasn't really, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, any change, I guess. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I knew some of them because uh, I, I worked, uh, you know, a little bit. And when I was in, growing up, I used to go out and work in the fields and stuff, so I knew some of those guys. Uh, and uh, and they were good guys. They were good kids. I mean, we were all good kids. We, we, all of it, there was really, well, I do remember some violence there, but uh, there wasn't really no no uh, uh, any big uh, violence type thing. Uh, uh, our uh, all of our uh, demonstrations were, uh, uh, you know, peaceful. Uh, we marched mainly, and we did. We did get arrested a couple of times, but uh, um, for what? Well, we got arrested in Del Rio for uh, I think they called us uh, harassing or, or harassing the uh, city or obstructing justice or something. <laughs> so they put they uh, well, it's just an overnight thing there. But then we almost got arrested in Eagle Pass uh, because actually there was a, a before our walkout there was a walkout in, in Crystal City. And uh, so we went out there and helped them, and they came out here and marched with us, and we were going back and forth, and then Eagle Pass uh, started uh, looking into it, so we went out there and helped them and marched with them and stuff. Then we went to Del Rio, and uh, this one, the Rangers came in because they thought we were, we were uh, organizing the whole deal there, so that uh, Captain Alley, or whatever his name was, he was here. Uh, this one, this one, they came in and uh, they sort of, uh, actually they arrested uh, one of our uh, leader head guys here, his name was Gilbert uh, Gilberto Torres. They arrested him and, and uh, we went out there and uh, you know, picketed the, uh, the uh, jailhouse and they arrested some of us there. <laughs> but uh, it was just a little... Uh, uh, it wasn't real misdemeanor type things. It wasn't, uh, you know, nothing violent. Uh, I don't remember. The, we did have some some uh, people coming in from San Antonio. Uh, they were called, I think they called themselves the Brown Berets. They were kind of, uh, they were kind of uh, uh, radical <laughs> guys. There, uh, they always wanted to punch it out with the, the Rangers and all this stuff. Yeah, you know, we we stayed away from that when we didn't. I don't remember any any instances that we got physically with anybody, you know. So why was this important to you? The walkout. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> like I said, uh, um, it was several of us, or I know there were several of us that uh, had this thing building up since we were kids. I mean, I've had this, you know, when I was like I said, all those, you know, my nose on the on the wall and my, you know, getting licks for speaking Spanish, all that sort of, you know, came together there. And, and uh, when this happened, I said, well, you know, we, I guess it's, it's time for this, for this kind of a change thing. And uh, how, how had you heard about these ideas? Like, how had you? Um you know, walking out, like protesting, like where did you, where did y'all get these ideas? Actually, the, the, the walkout thing, the way I heard, I heard it, we were like, like I say, that the, the Mayo Club was a, a little thing that we had, and um, we had like, 
during, after the football games, we had like little, what they call them, record hops. Uh, they had a couple of hours of, uh, you know, little dance type thing. And uh, of course, I had a little band in high school who, well, I played in a little band. So we, we, we used to play out there, at, we, and we used to play at the American Legion. And um, we announced this at the school that we were going to have a little, you know, get together after the game. But then to do that, they had to, you had to have a, a teacher sponsor you, and none of the Anglo teachers would would sign the uh, thing. Uh, it was only Gravierta Hoya or, or uh, Bermea was the ones that uh, signed the yes, it could be announced, and and um, that and, and were these dances for everybody? Huh? Were they for everybody, or was it just for? Uh, it was for everybody. Like, like, say the uh, Spanish club had a meeting or something. They had to have teachers sponsor you, so uh, oh, um, they did that. But uh, they didn't want to sponsor us. So it's just the, the two Hispanic teachers we had there, uh, Mr. Reyes didn't want to get involved too much in that. Did they ever give you any reason, like why they wouldn't sponsor you, or did they? No, Mr. Reyes was sort of, uh, you know, uh, we used to call him Coco. <laughs> He was a cocoa type guy, you know, uh, Explain that. brown on the outside and white on the inside. <laughs> so we didn't really bother him too much. But uh, we usually got our signatures from uh, Mr. Tafoya and Mr. Goodmayer. But it sounds to me like, you know, y'all were just having a party. It wasn't, it wasn't anything radical, like it wasn't anything. Uh, uh, uh. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, but that's yes. what I'm saying. Actually, so. actually, uh, um, I think it was. Uh, uh, I think you know, I had, I had a lot of fun. You know, like I say, we never did have any, any confrontations of any kind. It never did get physical or anything. Uh, and but, actually, uh, my view of all this, uh, um, politically, we lost. I mean, we didn't gain. Anything. I don't think we gained anything politically. Not at that moment, uh, and to me, um, you know, it's just uh, uh, it's just defined me as a person. Uh, it defined me as uh, uh, actually as me uh, actually using the Constitution uh, to express myself and. Uh, and actually, that defined me as an American. And I was really proud of that. <laughs> Golly. Uh, even to this, to this moment, you know, um, after I served in the Navy and stuff, uh, I see the uh, American flag rises, and golly, I got, I got a lump on my throat. You know, and I, I hear taps, and God, that's so. Uh, but uh, it, it's just... Uh, it's just, just it's just the way it, it, it. I mean, I just it, it defined it, defined helped me define who I was, and, and uh, that that was what I'm proud of. Yeah. So tell me just a little bit more about high school. I mean, it seems like you know you had teachers who wanted to help you and like wanted to. Um, you know, support your activities, like whether it was like music or, you know, being social. Um, and then it sounds like for the most part, you had teachers that just kind of ignored you, like mm -hmm. just, you know. Yes. What was that like as a student? Uh, well, it was kind of hard because uh, uh, one of the teachers we had in one of the classes is was required for, uh, uh, I guess, to... Uh, even to graduate, I think it was, we had to take that the government course, mm -hmm. and uh, which is you know a very important uh, 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 you know class. But uh, here in the whole uh, school district, we had one teacher that, that did that class, and she was only and she she was hard. She was a very hard teacher. Uh, uh, and she, like, if you got a little bit behind, you know, uh, I mean, uh, there's always, I've had 
instances where I got behind and you know, teachers were sort of, you know, to help you out or they were able to take a look at this book or, or read this or read this. And she wouldn't tell you nothing. She would just, she would just skip you and, and she just kept on going and, and you would start falling behind. You would ask questions and she would give you a, you know, half-sided uh, answer, you know. And, and uh, she just didn't, or she didn't recur. And that was, in my view, and then in some other people's view, that they, she was the best teacher there was. But I, I, I didn't ever did have any, any connections with with that teacher. Um, uh, she was a, a, she was something else. I mean, to, now, and there was a couple of other teachers. Miss, uh, Mrs. Graves, I think it was. It was an English teacher. Uh, she was also uh, kind of uh, hard on on. Uh, uh, us kids, I guess. Uh, one of one of the instances that I remember is with in Mid Graves' uh, uh, class. There is, she was having you know we were doing this teacher uh, English classes. It was uh, in the afternoon, and one of the kids was you know sort of nodding off, you know going to sleep and stuff, and uh, she got an eraser, and back then it was a. Little small eraser, you know, little black ones. Mm -hmm. Then there was a big one, uh, and it had a smooth side on one side. It was about that big, and she got that one and threw it at that kid, and hit him right there, and uh, almost, almost knocked him off. And she she told him to either wake up or get her leave the class. And uh, that was that was uncalled for. I mean, she didn't have to do that. And, and all that, all, like I said, all this stuff sort of, uh, you know came together when all this walkout thing and and uh, we just uh, uh, you know we thought it was it was a good idea and, it, and not everybody walked out you know I remember the uh, first few days were there weren't that many participants uh, I remember the first day that well, I got out the first day but uh, we got so back to when when was this what year was this uh, this was 1970 it's in April. Where was this in, in April? Yes, in April 1970. I uh, don't remember the exact date, but I think it was the latter part of the, uh, around the 27th, 6th or 7th. Uh, remember the first day we walked out at 10 o'clock, we everybody got up and left. And uh, what was that like just in the like the the days previous? Like what? Like were you excited about it? Were you nervous about it? Were you scared? Like did you think, oh man, like I'm not gonna like, did you? What did you think about it? Well, uh, I'd find out. I found out actually the day before. Uh, they came. I said, "Hey, we we're gonna walk out tomorrow," and I thought they were joking. I said, "Yeah, sure, sure." You know. And and they said, "No, we're gonna walk out." And I, I would say, "Well, if you walk out, I'll go." And you know, and everybody else would do the same thing. You know, if you go, I'll go. You know, if you go, I go. And so we, you know, and then uh, I was kind of nervous that day, and I didn't think we were gonna do it, but. Came ten o'clock and I saw one guy go by and I was sitting in, on a classroom that was had an open window towards the uh, hallway. And I saw one guy go by, and then two more guys, and a couple, two or three guys, and, and then everybody. Then I saw a whole bunch of people go walking by, and well, I got up and left them too. So. Uh, Did and you was, talk to your parents about it the night before? Well, actually, that that first day, that first day, uh, you know, I, I went to school. And, and I rode the bus back home because I live in the west side there, so I rode the bus and and I got home. But then I didn't ride the bus that way because I, I was out and out protesting. So I, I walked back uh, into the, to the house, but I got there at the same time. They're usually the same time that uh, that I came back from school, and so my mom right. was there. Yeah, my mom says, says uh, "Hey, uh, I heard you they were getting out of school," and says, "No, nah, I don't know." <laughs> and she said, well, he says, uh, you better not get out of school. You better stay in school. And I said, am I? You know, not me. You know, you know, como cree? And all this stuff. You know? <laughs> and uh, that same night, or the same uh, day, uh, with the Channel 5, uh, San Antonio and Channel 4 came out there, and, and uh, 41 came out there. <laughs> and my mom was watching TV, and... The so first, the at, first guy that I was there protesting and stuff. And so you were, your mom saw you on TV. Huh? Your mom saw you on TV. Oh yeah, yeah, she saw me on TV. Well, the following day, that was the first day. But the following day, they did see me there and there. Yeah, I didn't say anything, but 
they were sort of kind of disappointed, but after after a while, they get, you know. Why were they disappointed? Well, because uh, uh, they wanted me to, to finish school. You know, my older sister graduated, and and I was the only uh, male for the family, and they wanted me to graduate. And, mm -hmm. and uh and uh, they say, well, you know, you need to stay in school and stuff. And but uh, after that, uh, yeah, I, they were, like I say, a little bit disappointed. But after a while, they, I mean, for the first, I guess, for the the, the following two or three weeks after the uh, initial walkout, there was you know, everybody got out. But then in May, people started going back, and and. Uh, uh, some of the people, the the graduating class, the seniors, some of them have to had to uh, take some extra courses and stuff to graduate and stuff, and so they they went back and and um, uh, they got you know uh, back in their their studies, and uh, but mo mo well I'd say most of us because the ones that people hung around me uh, or that I knew my friends, uh, most of them didn't we didn't go back anymore. Oh, I dropped off at ten at at the uh, uh, sophomore year. So tell me a little bit about um, just in general, like your feelings about it in general. Um, why was that something you were willing to do? Why? Yeah. Well, it, it's just like I say. Uh, um, it it was um, all this stuff that I had gone through. Uh, uh, it was. Uh, it's just sort of a. Uh, sort of came together there. I mean, uh, all this, you know, the poll tax thing, and you know, this uh, uh, little nose thing that I put in my, at, at my on the wall there, and, and you know, getting spanked for all this other stuff. Uh, I didn't want my kids to go through that. You know, and, uh, I I kind of felt that it was a. Uh, it was a uh, uh, a chance for us to. To uh, to make a change, and and uh, apparently that you know that's that's uh, that's that's what we we did. Like I say, politically we didn't we didn't do anything. Well, actually we did, but it's two years later they did you know change that, or the school board changed its uh, tactics. But um, <clears throat> so tell me a little bit about that, like. Um... Because we we haven't really talked about it here in the interview, but what was the like? What was the the reason y'all were protesting? Well, uh, there were different reasons, I guess. Uh, you know, sometimes we we uh, uh, get together, you know, my compadres and stuff, and you know, we people that uh, we went to school with and stuff, and we talk about this stuff, and uh, n not you know not very often but you know we have talked about this and actually this different different uh, everybody I guess had different uh, uh, reasons why we we did this uh, uh, but the main thing that I remember is why I I got out and and, and uh, I guess my parents were sort of uh, started to back me up uh, after we found out is when uh, Mr. Garza got uh, uh, run off, ran off from, or discharged from uh, his duties as a, as a teacher. Tell Once me. that did, the, that. the whole town uh, decided to go ahead and, and uh, you know, back him. So tell me a little bit about that. What was happening? Well, uh, uh, um, uh, Mr. Garza was a teacher at the Rob. And, and this is uh, elementary school. Yes, it's an elementary school, and we were in high school, but it was an elementary school. And um, doing all this stuff, he, he he was one of the first teachers to start uh, uh, sort of back or back in the uh, the the walkout. And uh, he he would uh, actually what I heard that he did, he was talking to other teachers about. Uh, uh, Helping the students, uh, you know, or get more involved with the students as, as far as the walkout is concerned. Maybe they could, uh, you know, uh, cause the, uh, or not stop the walkout, but uh, maybe uh, uh, get a uh, a, a uh, get it uh, resolved, uh, problems resolved faster. And uh, 
the uh, uh, school board uh, thought he was uh, uh, he was back in or back in the uh, the the walkout uh, supporting the walkout and, and so what uh, was happening before the walkout that that was the reason to protest like do you know what I mean so you're talking about like um, the students already had the idea mm -hmm. but what was inspiring the idea well uh, um, I, I think uh, mainly uh, uh, one of the, the the language uh, was one of the uh, uh, the language was definitely one of the uh, reasons. Uh, the that? Spanish, the Spanish uh, situation. What well, I mean, they, they, you couldn't speak Spanish. They wanted you to, to speak English, and uh, and we didn't want to do it. You know, uh, and uh, that was one of the uh, main uh, uh, concerns or reasons that a lot of people uh, supported the walkout. And another one was the. Uh, were they trying to pass a rule, or y'all were just Tired of the rule, or yeah, um, I guess uh, were they to do it was it was uh, it was uh, I guess it was both actually because uh, um, the the school district was uh, had their goals set on 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 us speaking English, which was it was fine. I mean, but the thing is that uh, you know, like for me, most of my people in the house or the family didn't speak English, you know, so we had to speak Spanish at the house. And uh, which was fine. I mean, you know, then we come to school, and you know, we uh, uh, we would say a few words in Spanish, and you know, that we were already we were militant. You know, we were they would uh, mark us down as being uh, you know uh, uh, troublemaker and stuff. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, one of the reasons. And the other reason was uh, the uh, teachers. We didn't have. Uh, Mexican American teachers, which really didn't make as much sense to me back then either. But uh, as time you know went by, I, I kind of looked and understood that uh, uh, a lot of the uh, teachers or sort of look like you, they sort of help you out a little more than, than uh, or they're supposed to. Some of them don't, but they're supposed to help you out a little more, and, and they. You can uh, sort of um, define yourself more with them that that you could with with an, uh, another teacher. And then there's teachers that uh, you know different uh, ethic teachers that uh, are good good teachers and and they they do help you know quite a bit. And, and actually, uh, I saw those type of teachers actually when I went to college. Uh, it was a whole different thing in college, you know. Uh, when I was at uh, ECU in, in uh, North, South, uh, North Carolina, uh, there was a we had uh, uh, teachers there that uh, were outstanding. I mean, uh, then he came here, and uh, uh, there, were, there was teachers here that were, you know, they were really, I mean, they were good people. I mean, God, I mean, they, they were, they were. I was really. Uh, Proud to call them, you know, my teachers, you know, because uh, uh, they they were they were good people. Um, but that was that was a uh, that was the main reasons. So you were 15, 16 years old at the time. I was uh, sixteen. Okay. Yep. Quite a while. But um. So you, the walkout lasted from late April. Was it through well, the Well, it was, uh, yeah, well, the school year ended it in, in May, so uh, it was only two or three weeks, you know, for that school year. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, actually the uh, the court battle went on for, I guess, a couple of years more after that. And it was people like uh, uh, Mrs. Morales. Uh, Who's that? Mrs. Munoz. Uh, uh, Mrs. Moreno. Uh, Who are these people? They're the uh, people. Mrs. Morales was the one that. Uh, Do you know her, her full name? Huh? Her full name? Uh, well, no, but uh, she was one of the one that uh, su su sued the uh, school board. Oh, I see. For okay. this whole thing to start out, yeah. And actually, 
she, uh, that's why the school here is named Morales Junior High, because of her. And uh, Munoz, uh, Ms., uh, not Munoz, uh, Olga Romero, uh, she was also involved, uh, Alfred's mother was also involved in that. Um, uh, Mrs. Moreno, uh, they were, I mean, all these ladies were involved in that suit thing, and they, they kept on working at it after we, you know, for the following year, everything sort of went back to school, uh, sort of normal. Uh, not normal, but there were some changes done, and, and uh, so it started getting a little better. Um, and uh, all this, uh, all the people kept on working on the that suit they had, and, and uh, about two years later, they, they finally they, the school gave in. And uh, they didn't really give in, but they changed their... their uh, and that's why I say that politically we didn't really do anything, but, uh, you know, personally I think it, it, it changed. And a lot of people don't agree with that. Some people say, well, it didn't do anything to me. Uh, it just ruined me and all this stuff. Well, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it just uh, different opinions, I guess. So why did you decide not to go back to school? Well, actually, I did start back school. It was my junior year, and I started school. And uh, as, as uh, during that during that uh, year there, I was a sophomore, and uh, you know we uh, we finished the uh, our our season. You know, we had played I think at uh, football season that uh, year or that time of. Uh, uh, that time we played eight games, I think, and, and the varsity played ten. So I played eight games with you know, with uh, the sub uh, varsity, and then they moved us. Uh, several of us uh, guys there, they moved us to the varsity, and uh, we had great expectations because we were sophomores and we were playing with the varsity, and you know, we were. We were. I liked football. Mm -hmm. uh, the coaches, they looked at me. They, they really liked me, and they would pat me on the shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? All that stuff, you know. And I was really into that stuff. And then when my junior year came along, after this, all this stuff, they sort of uh, uh, worked us a little more than they did the other guys too. <laughs> they, they sort of kept on. Uh, and I thought, I thought, I looked, I saw that as a um, discrimination type thing. So I didn't mention anything, but I just sort of shied away from that and um I ended up you know quitting the team and and uh again I got out of school and that was my senior year was should have been uh uh or my well I was class 72 but my uh senior my senior football was uh 71 and uh I went uh golly late 70s Early '71, I went to San Antonio's. My sister was out there, so I went out there to live with them. And um, uh, that was uh, I would uh, I'd be watching the uh, newspapers and watching all the uh, scores, all the you know high school scores and stuff. And at that time, uh, Evaldi went undefeated, and, and that was my uh, that was my senior year. And, uh, I cried over that, but uh, that was felt terrible. But uh, then the following year, 1972, uh, Uvalde won state. So uh, it was a it was a class the class behind us, yeah. but we were the first to go undefeated in 20 or 30 years, I think. It was a while. Yeah. What was so important to you, or what were, was like the reason behind like you were willing to give that up? What was what now? I mean, obviously, football was something you loved. Mm -hmm. So, what was so important to you, or what had you experienced that was so important to you that you were just willing to let football go? Well, um, actually, I, I was still kind of confused uh, um, as to what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and uh, um, you know, so my parents weren't that educated or, or, you know, knew anything about it. So they, they just, well, I was sort of on my own there a little bit. And uh, I didn't know, I, 
just didn't know. I just sort of blanked out there for a while. But uh, I was still in the music business, you know, so I, I did that for a while. But I didn't want to do that all my life, I guess. Uh, it's still in my heart, but I, I didn't want to, you know, live off that. It, it's it's a hard life. Uh, and anyway, and so I... I, I uh, so I guess my, my best uh, opportunity was to go on service. And uh, actually I got drafted. Uh, I was uh, I was drafted uh, of all the last people. When we left, the, the I was 16, you know, going on 17. And, uh, you know, I didn't go back to school the next day. So they turned all our names <laughs> over to the local board here. And... and uh, I was one of the last people to get drafted, or the last group, I guess. The war was still on. Uh, you know. Did you ever think about that? Did you ever did that ever occur to you that um, you might have to serve or? Um, no, actually, I wanted to serve. Uh, when, when I, I actually I wanted to, uh, I was I was going to volunteer for the Marine Corps, and uh, they didn't take me because I had a physical, I had a ear infection or something, so they, they, and I didn't pass the physical. So they didn't take me, but then they got drafted, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pass the physical." So I went, you know, and sure enough, I passed the physical. They said, "Well, stand over there. You go, you go in the army." I said, "I didn't want to go in the army." And of course, all my uh, uh, uncles have been in the army, and but I didn't want to go in the army. I said, well, excuse me, and they were they were uh, they were uh, right next door that the army and navy, and you know. So I didn't know the Navy. I said, well, I can't go go in there. So I went in there. And they were swearing, swearing in the, your, your oath there. So I went in the Navy and swore in. So uh, I joined, joined the Navy. Uh, and, but uh, I, uh, I, I, I volunteered for God, everything on and then everything that I could, I could that uh, there was there, actually. Um, and then I, I ended up, uh, uh, there was an opportunity. I was a corpsman. Um, there was an opportunity for me to to uh, join the uh, Marine because uh, the Marines are part of the Navy. But mm -hmm. Just don't don't tell them because they get upset. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, Department of the Navy pays the Marine Corps or the Marines, and uh, so they they used us. Or I was a corpsman. I was a medic, uh, so they used the Navy medics. So uh, I had an opportunity to change. So I I, I Volunteered for that, and and uh, I went through all kinds of stuff, and I was gun ho back then. I went through jungle school, to winter survival, desert survival. Uh, um, I did all kinds of uh, school there, and or uh, classes and stuff, and courses that I did. And when it got to the point that. Uh, in the morning formations, uh, you know, the, the, the captain says, "I need some volunteers." Is it not you, Doc? You know, I don't want you. <laughs> I'll volunteer for everything. They would, they would tell I'll volunteer for everything. Yeah. So it's not you, but um, it, it was just uh, uh, it. it uh, and that that sort of a uh, after that, I I did I did volunteer several times for uh, combat uh, for Vietnam and and. By that time, everything was scaling down, and and, and uh, well, it ended up in '75. So, uh, but it started scaling down in '74, I think it was, or seven, somewhere in there. And I was still uh, in training back then. So I, I did. I was right, right at the end of that. Uh, uh, but I'm still considered. We're still considered us uh, Vietnam era. Whatever that means. <laughs> So why would you volunteer for everything? Um, I was young, <laughs> and uh, I was gun ho, I guess. And uh, if John Wayne could do it, I could do it better. You know, actually, um, they um, it had a sort of a training or a mindset that uh, the Marine Corps did uh, that uh, I. Still, uh, sort of use it, and uh, sometimes it scares me. But uh, I have the the Marine Corps gives you a, a, a mindset that uh, either 
it's a do or die for everything. Everything is a do or die, you know. And uh, after that experience there, and I, that's what I went after life as. It was a do or die situation, and uh, I, I guess, well, I've done okay. I guess uh, that was. Uh, I could say I was never defeated in life. <laughs> the only thing that uh, that I have uh, problems now is in my health. Uh, I'm not too. Uh, I'm, I have some health issues, but other than that, uh, I mean, you know, my life was. Uh, uh, I guess it's been okay. Yeah. Yep. So tell me, um, at you served from '72 to '76. What did you do after um, you were discharged? After? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I came home in 76, and uh, that was about, oh, about a week I came in. I was at the house, and uh, this guy came over and uh -huh. picked me up for started a band, or there wasn't a band, and they needed players. I got I just got off service. and. What do you play? I, I play guitar. I'm going to ask Yeah, you. I play guitar. Yes. How old were you when you started? When I first started, golly, about eight. How'd you How'd you start playing guitar? Um, uh, one time we went to uh, my visit my mom's family. Uh, there was no guitar there. It, uh, uh, my uncle had it there. I don't know. So the corner stuffed all cobwebs and stuff, and uh, I saw it, and I was playing with it one day, or moving, you know, plucking at it, and. My uncle said, well, you, you know, go ahead and take it. And, Whose and, was uh, it? Do you know? Huh? Whose was it? Do you know? Um, I don't know who it was. It was an old, you know, guitar. Um, and I brought it over here and uh, put new strings on it and stuff. And I started playing with that. And, and uh, I've, I've been, I started playing my first band when I was 11, 12. Yeah, and then I played uh, a couple other other little band here in town. I played in high school. When, when there was uh, uh, the walkout, I was playing. We had a high school band here. And then I uh, played uh, with a band, uh, a pretty well-known band here. Uh, his name is Savala. They're from Crystal City, but uh, uh, Johnny Ray uh, was uh, the leader. He was here in town. And I played with several people. Uh, uh, out of San Antonio area, golly, I played with Gilbert Rodriguez. I played with Carlos Miranda, uh, Nick is Nick, uh, a couple of times. <laughs> uh, and I know, I, golly, I guess I must have been, uh, I have seen the, or talked to a lot of the, the old musicians, uh, you know, all of them, golly. Uh, God, it's, Everybody, uh, Little Joe, uh, Freddie, all of them. I, I, I knew them all. Stephen Jordan was a real good guy. He was a friend of mine. I consider a friend. Carlos Miranda was a good guy. They're all gone now. But uh, they're good people. Uh, yeah, Did a you lot of teach memories. yourself? Huh? Did you teach yourself to play? Yes. How? I don't know. I don't know a letter or a note. And I couldn't do the thing in that. But I, I could. I used to. I used to do it. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I haven't really done anything. As a matter of fact, I, I was uh, still have. I didn't have guitars and stuff, and, and uh, I went out there and I was cleaning out my little storeroom there, and I saw, there was my amp still there. I said, "Golly!" So I took it out and I plugged it in. And, well, this thing, I bought that thing in 1973, and that's, you know, that's the only amp I ever had. Uh, it's a Fender amp. It's a professional amp, but it's an old one. Uh, I used all kinds of amps, but that was, that was the only amp I had. So I took it and I got it in the shop now. So, uh, and I got my grandkids now. That uh, you know, well, one of them they're they're trying to learn something. So I guess I'm gonna try to teach them something. Yep. Were your parents musical? Like no. My grandmother was, my grandmother. Uh, um, but uh, I have some family members that are uh, musically inclined. Uh, I guess my best one, my best family member that's musically inclined is 
a guy named, uh, uh, well, his name is uh, uh, Juan uh, Balades Aguilera. And I guess everybody knows him as Juan Graviel. He's, uh, he's related to us. His cousin, his grandfather and my, gran my grandfather were cousins. Wow. He, when he, a uh, uh, long time ago, when he was, uh, I guess, go going in his career, he used to send tickets and stuff to my parents for him to go see him at the, uh, when he used to come to San Antonio, perform San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, I personally seen him a couple of times, and I know who he is, but I hadn't talked to him in a long time, but... Uh, He's, uh, he's related to us. Wow. He's, yep. And uh, there's a, I did some background checks on my name, and it's a very important name. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's, he's a, I guess, one of the, uh, oh, there's some other people. There, uh, one of the, another Aguilera is uh, uh, Rick Aguilera. He played with the uh, Minnesota Twins, uh, professional football, uh, baseball player. Um, he's got a ring. You know, they got a, a, he, he won the, uh, the uh, World Series in, must have been 80, 90, 91, somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah. So he's another famous guy. Yep. And me. Uh, but I'm not done yet, so. There you go. You have, <laughs> you have time. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so tell me a little bit after you came home, like you decided to come back to Uvalde? Um, actually, because um, I served four years in, in uh, Where my, were you those four years? Huh? Where were you? Uh, I went to boot camp in uh, Great Lakes, Illinois, mm -hmm. and then uh, my first duty station was in Key West, Florida, uh -huh. and then I volunteered for the Marine Corps. So I ended up at, uh, and finished up in uh, Campbell, June, North Carolina. And I served on two ships. I was on the uh, USS uh, uh, Water Canal, which is a helicopter carrier. And uh, my main ship that I served was on the uh, USS Saginaw uh, LST 1188. That was a troop carrier. And uh, I served with the 10th Marines, uh, which was a uh, uh, artillery unit uh, for the uh, Second Marine Division. Were you ever deployed anywhere? Employed? Deployed? Were you? Were you? Oh there? yes, I went to Gitmo, Gitmo, and I went to the Caribbean. Uh, we did what uh, they call the uh, Caribbean cruise. We went Puerto Rico, um, Barbados, uh, Dry Tortugas, and all that area, um, Jamaica, uh, back to the. Uh, the, the Canary Islands and then back over here, or not the Canary Islands, whatever the little islands, and back to North Carolina. And then I was stationed at uh, uh, Gidmo, uh, Guantanamo Bay. How long were you there? Uh, four months. Uh, we were there when uh, Cuba moved troops over to um, Angola. They moved us in there for uh, reinforcements uh, to rein uh, reinforce the Marine barracks there. Yeah, yeah. I went with the artillery. We had, we had a tank company, and uh, I think it was a company of Marines that went in there. Yeah, it was about three hundred of us to reinforce over over ten thousand <laughs> Cuban troops there. But anyway, we were supposed to hold them off. So, what was that like for you after um, you know growing up here in Uvalde, just being in these different places? Actually, that was the first time I ever left here. Uh, really? When I went, when I went, when I went to boot camp, uh, that was the first time I ever been in an airplane. First time I ever seen snow. Well, actually, I seen snow, but I mean, just one day and the next day will be no. uh, no snow. The first time I saw it snow and stay down was when I was in, in Chicago or Great Lakes. And uh, first time I saw the sea, I never seen the sea. Uh, and it, it was a, a lot of first times for, for and then when uh, my four years were up, I just couldn't wait to get back to Texas. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just wanted to come back and back to Texas. Yes, ma'am. So what was 
So you had mentioned that you had gone to school, like you went to college, you took some college courses? Yes. Where, um, where did you study? Uh, well, I went to, uh, I, I started in my last year in, uh, in my enlistment uh, in uh, North Carolina. I, was, I went to East Carolina University, or took some courses there. Uh, then I went to school here. At Southwest Texas. Mm -hmm. And what did you get your uh, degree in? Uh, I got my degree in 1980. And that was your associate's degree? Yes. And what did you get it in? Uh, general education. Yeah, just. Uh, so um, during that time, like you had mentioned that your father didn't see you graduate, but obviously he got to, you know, see you go off to the to the Navy and, and come home. And um, did y'all ever talk about that? Like, did he ever? Oh, not really. Uh, uh, my dad was a very quiet man. Uh, he was a type of never smoked, never drank. Uh, he was a person that was dedicated from home to work and back. And that was, that was it. Never had in any, uh, always had everything I, I needed to, but their family did. We never had nothing. That we never went over hungry. Uh, periods or anything. It was always a roof over our heads. And he was a good man. Yes. yes. What did your mom think about your graduating? From college? Uh -huh. My mom was uh, sick when uh, very ill when I graduated. Uh, but uh, she didn't. She didn't come. Uh, my older sister was here and my wife, and, uh, but. I didn't, uh, it was this, this building here, the other side, no, no, no this is the state building. Well, I think we graduated in the gym, or well, we used to graduate in the gym, right down the road here. I had some English ta uh, English course here at uh, at this building, and the band was in this building. I, I played with the stage band here. Uh, yeah, I should have brought my... I have a yearbook too. Um, yeah. But was your mom glad that you went back to school? Um, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess um, like I said, she was a uh, she was ill. Uh, um, she didn't really, uh, I guess, uh, was really in that uh, condition to, uh, I guess, understand. I guess, uh, but. Uh, because I just remember you said you saying you know that it was very important for them that you. Oh yes, well it was because when I when I was a kid, my mom wanted me to be an architect, uh, and actually that's what I ended up doing. Uh, not an architect, uh, but uh, I uh, I was an estimator in San Antonio for a long time. Uh, I did uh, construction estimation and and on labor and materials for a concrete outfit. Uh, and uh, I had to draw some stuff, and and I became pretty good at it. Uh, I think I did. Uh, I drew plans. I did the, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with town here, but the uh, library, you know, the, the, the new one it yeah. I, I did the foundation on that. Uh, I was working for a, co a company in San Antonio, and they brought me out here as the uh, field supervisor for that project. And uh, it was fun because I lived right down the road, and uh, I designed. Well, I didn't design it, but I drew the uh, parking lot there. Uh, you know, the, we had we had the plans for the building and everything, but they didn't have nothing. Uh, well, they had a little sketch for the uh, for the uh, parking lot, and my boss told me, "Hey, well, we want a parking area for 200 cars." I said, okay, so. Uh, I started drawing something, and uh, I drew a little sketch there, and they liked it, so I had to get it uh, approved. So I drew it and took it over to our uh, engineer people that'll get it, get it engineered, and, and get it uh, architect and stuff, and then uh, we brought it in and presented it to the city council here, and they uh, they approved it, and I didn't get any credit, of course, but uh, I did it. It was, it was my idea. Nice. Yeah. So that parking lot is mine. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
you mentioned your daughter, so you were married? Are you married? Yes. And what is your wife's name? Margarita. And how did y'all meet? Uh, my uh, friend of mine, who was our drummer back then, uh, when I left the service, uh, well, me and him used to hang out, we were all just hang around all the time. And uh, when I went to service, uh, you know, we used to write each other and stuff. And um, he uh, wrote me one day and he said he was going to get married. And I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, who to? I mean, he was a kind of a shy guy. I said, who the hell are you going to get married to? He said, well, I found this lady. I said, okay. And I was telling him, hey, does she have any sisters and stuff? <laughs> and he said, yeah, he, he just got some. I said, okay, well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, they sent me some pictures and we started, you know, conversing over that. And, uh, I came back home, and I think it was uh, my last uh, leave I had was a year before I got out of the service. Came home and I met her and uh, started writing her, you know, started writing. And the uh, following year, June, I was discharged. I came in, and uh, I was at the house about 15 minutes. <laughs> I went over to see her, and uh, <clears throat> I was over there. And I was discharged in June, and then we got married in December. Yeah, and uh, we'll be married 40 years in this December. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. So how many children did y'all have? Uh, we only have one daughter. One daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. And her name is? Karina. Yeah, and she's, uh, she, well, she's 39. Uh, but um, she's got three kids now, and uh, beyond. And uh, the, the youngest, the youngest is little, uh, little boy. He's uh, nine, I think. Yeah, he's the youngest. And I have a granddaughter that's uh, twenty. Yeah, and I have one in junior high. So, do they know about your participating in the walkout? Do they know? Oh about yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. What are you talking about it? Yeah, but they, they, uh, they, they don't really, they don't really know. Why we did it, or what, why, why it was, uh, you know, what was done, but actually, you could see the uh, uh, some of the uh, the results, I guess you would call it, because uh, now they got that, uh, um, you know, that uh, bilingual classes. That was, uh, you know, that wasn't nothing. You you couldn't have anything like that before. Uh, you know, you have this. Then, of course, you know, our population has greatly increased with uh, with uh, non-English speaking people, I guess. Uh, but, you know, that that uh, that uh, has also contributed, I guess, to that. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that, well, that mainly, uh, if we were kids, you know, we used to have, uh, in school, you know, we used to hung out with your friends and stuff. and. Back then, there was only two groups. It was us and them, you know, <laughs> just yeah. us and, that we all look alike. And then the, that's what the teachers say, we all look alike. And uh, the, uh, you know, the widows over there. But now, we got us and the widows and, and the uh, Mexicanos over here. <laughs> There's three different groups now, you know. Um, and it, it's just, uh, it, it, but it's, it, it, uh, you can see some of the, uh, you know, changes that we've done, uh, um, you know, we got rid of uh, the uh, Mexican food on Wednesdays, you know, <laughs> which was enchiladas, you know, <laughs> the school menu, you know, Thursday was hamburgers and Friday was fish, you know, so they finally got rid of that, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, I don't think we changed that, but we did that. Uh, you know, you know that, that, that's uh, the teachers right now, you know, I mean, now there's barely an Anglo teacher you know, there's several, but I mean, very few. Compared most to of them, yeah, most of most of the uh, girls that I went to school with became teachers. Uh, you know, uh, Mary Martinez, uh, she was she's a vice superintendent. Oh, he was. Now she's the you know, school board. Uh, and Gloria and golly, uh, Comadre Rebecca, and all them. Uh, they're teachers now. They, they became teachers. Uh, uh, Dora, Hurtado, 
there was a, this meant this moment when we became teachers and <coughs> yeah, Marta Sanchez. It, and you know that was that was quite a, a difference of when when we were in school. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add or talk about or make sure we include? Well, no, not really, not really. Uh, um, no, I guess I guess that we we touched everything. Pretty do well. Yeah, well, I guess we touched everything. <laughs> I just want to go back a little bit because you were telling me about that period from 1970 um, to 1970. Two, I guess, just before that time, mm -hmm. um, because you were telling me about the walkouts in Crystal City, mm -hmm. and that y'all were kind of involved with that, and then y'all had the walkout here in Ovalde, mm -hmm. and then from here, what happened? From here, we went to uh, well, the one in Crystal City was the first one that that uh, that, that was before us, uh, and th they won their case uh, uh, right away, actually, and that's why that's why I guess we decided to go. <laughs> Try over here too, and <coughs> or the you know, whoever decided to do it is why they decided to do it. But anyway, uh, after we uh, walked out on our uh, uh, walk out here, we went to um, I think we went to Eagle Pass right after here. What was going on in Eagle Pass? <coughs> the same thing was trying to get uh, you know more uh, Mexican American teachers, uh, trying to get uh, uh, you know more. Uh, participation in, in, in the uh, school board, like mm -hmm. here, uh, our school board was an all Anglo school board. It was all male. We didn't have any female. All males, all Anglos. Uh, it, it was just, uh, it, it didn't look right. I mean, you know, our population was mainly Mexican American and, and uh, you know, maybe 1%, 2% black, you know, and, uh, and maybe 20%. Percent, uh, you know, Anglo, and yet our school board was all Anglo. Our, you know, our, all our teachers were Anglo. Ninety percent of them were Anglo. Uh, then, and the same thing was happening in Eagle Pass and Del Rio, and, and uh, you know, we were trying to, I guess, get that, uh, you know, uh, distributed right, I guess, and that's what we were working on. And uh, we went to Eagle Pass, and and uh, they arrested us there for, for. Uh, I don't know what the thing, the, the, but they just threw in there for a couple of hours and let us go. And then we went to Del Rio, and that's when the, uh, the Texas Rangers got involved because they kind of figured we were, uh, um, you know, becoming militant and stuff. And, Tell or, me about that. Tell me a little bit more about that. About the... Uh, about the Rangers. The Rangers? Well, um... We had this, uh, uh, back then, the, the captain of the Rangers was Captain Ali. Ali, uh, uh, he was a John Wayne type guy. And uh, they, they got involved because, uh, you know, we started uh, going to different towns and, uh, you know, talking to people and stuff. And and uh, I say we because um, I, I went, but I didn't talk to anybody, but... Uh, I remember we went out there and uh, we got involved in also in the uh, voting. I think uh, that was a year of, uh, election year somehow. And we went in there and uh, we did the uh, uh, the uh, foot uh, work there. We, you know, we went around getting votes and stuff. And we went to Hondo. I know we went to Hondo uh, for that. And... Uh, the the Rangers got involved because, uh, like I say, we were going to different towns and talking about walkouts and stuff. And then uh, the uh, Brown Berets came in from uh, San Antonio, and uh, these guys were kind of uh, violent-looking guys. So uh, you know, the Rangers got uh, wanted to just keep an eye on that. So they came in and uh, and uh, they were, uh, but. Uh, like I say, we we never did have any any confirmations of any kind as far as violence or anything. It was all peaceful. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, 
I guess we express our opinion as described in the, uh, you know, in our constitution, uh, and uh, that was that was pretty neat. Uh, I was really proud of that. Uh, but that was uh, the main concern that the uh, Rangers got involved. And actually, there was another one before the Crystal City one. There was one in the Valley, I think, in Etch Couch, Elsa. There was a, there was a walkout. That was the first walkout there. And then <clears throat> there was uh, Quid City did theirs, and then we did ours, and then California, I think they won two real big one, or well, they might have been be before I don't know, but they had a real big one there. They, they they had some killings and stuff in L.A. I think, uh, but uh, I wasn't violent at all. And, but we had we had Rangers, and we had we even had the uh, Secret Service came by one time too, or, or somebody came in in, in a uh, black suburban. Uh, looking thing, uh, they uh, because Gilbert Torres, I don't know if it was Gilberto Torres, uh, he was one of our, our main uh, leaders back then, and uh, they arrested him. Uh, we were uh, protesting over there on Main Street, or marching over there, and the Texas Rangers came and picked him up, and they brought him in, and we came, we all came over here to, to uh, we were protesting on the uh, city. Uh, on this county jail here on, on Nopal Street, and uh, we were out there raising. Uh, and then the Rangers came in, and, and they they uh, well they dispersed us all, but uh, they finally let him go. They just held him down, I guess, a question or something. But uh, that was that was a big thing here. And uh, all the others were just marches. I mean, we, yeah, we marched. Uh, I know. Remember, we marched on the uh, school board office, which is back then was on Getty Street. We marched there. Marched there at the high school. We marched every day there. Uh, and that, that's about it. I, that's, that's like I said. The other schools we went to, them little towns here. And but that was that was about it. After that, I, I, I moved to San Antonio, I guess around June, that summer, I went to San Antonio. My sister was over there, and uh, I went there to live with him. That was June of 1971? There must have been, no, it was still 70, 70 but uh, that was in June, July, somewhere around there. And then you came back for the school Oh, yes, year, uh, I was over there, and then uh, I came back uh, to Uvalde, I guess around the holidays, November, December, and I stayed here, you know, I'm sorry, no, no, I came back to school, but it didn't, didn't work out, so uh, yeah. I tried to pick up some little work here and there, <coughs> and um, then, but I didn't have any, like I say, I was confused sort of at that time of, of uh, in life, I guess. Yeah. Um. So you said that you had been arrested one or two times? Yes. Were you ever, you know, frightened by that? No, no, it was kind of fun. <laughs> kind of fun? Yeah, well, it was a, a whole bunch of us, and they had it all in the same room, so we were yelling and screaming, you know, stuff. They gave us a potato soup in Del Rio. <laughs> and funny, well, it wasn't too that. good. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, no, it, it, was, it was sort of a... It, it was... It was, it was, a whole bunch of us were in there, and we, you know, we all knew each other, so we, I guess that kept us a little comfortable there, but it wasn't bad. Uh, but uh, what that did, was... What did your parents think about your being arrested? Well, my mom was, uh, my mom was, uh, she did it like that. She was, uh, she was, I guess, old school, I guess. <clears throat> she wanted to, she didn't want me to ever get arrested and stuff, but yeah, it happens. Uh, being you know kids and stuff, and especially that age and in the seventies, which is <laughs> it was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no, I guess they finally got over it. And, but the first, like I said, the first few days was kind of hard and when they first saw me on TV. There, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think your dad was proud of you for standing? I up? think so. I think so. Yeah. I, I, well, as a matter of fact, I I I know so because, uh, um, you know, 
it had to be done. You know, one one way or another, it was, was going to have to be done. Um, you know, we just uh, had the, saw the opportunity there. Well, me, I, I think I have saw the opportunity and all this, all this thing that has all this stuff has happened to me. Uh, you know, sort of came together and says, well, you know, it's either now or or never. You know. And, and uh, that was a sort of the attitude I had, and, and when I uh, after that, after all this was over, and I went to the service, I mean, I, I fell right in line there because that that was their attitude, there was their their motto, you know. But they didn't do, they didn't word it that way. It was for it was, it was a do or die thing. So, uh, not, I still I still do that. <laughs> And once in a while, I get I get overexcited. Yeah. So, what do you think about what's going on right now politically? Like, you know, you have Donald Trump saying he's going to build this beautiful wall, and uh, well, and I guess I'm the only one watching TV because I watch the NSNBC, <laughs> and this guy says, "Why are you the only one that watches that?" I says, "Yeah, but, um, it, it, it's." I don't know. I, I I don't I don't like it. Personally, don't like it, guy. Um, but um, the way I see it, it, the guy was born with a uh, a gold spoon. Uh, you know, he he uh, thinks he knows, but he he doesn't really know any of this stuff. But uh, you know, Barney's ideas are are good. They sound good, but. Uh, I don't know if there are. It's gonna be hard to, to uh, I mean, nothing's free. I mean, nothing's free. Uh, somebody's gonna end up paying for it, and, and uh, I don't like Ted Cruz at all. You know, uh, Hillary. Well, I think Hillary. Uh, you know, I voted for her in the primary, and. and uh, are you politically active currently? Yes. Are you? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I vote every time. <laughs> Are you New dog catcher, I vote for him. Are you involved, like, with the primary, no. like, with the No, I'm not involved. involved. I'm not involved, but I do, I do vote. But you do vote. Yeah. I'm not involved because of my medical problems. I, 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 uh, gotcha. I uh, don't get out as much as I used to. Uh, I don't drive anymore. Um, oh, I see. So uh, I, I, I just don't, uh, don't get involved in that anymore. But uh, I, do, uh, I do vote, yes. Do you think voting is important? Oh, yes. Yes. Do you talk uh, to your grandkids about it? Ma? Do you talk to your grandkids about it? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, my daughter, uh, she's 39 years old. She voted first time this year. Uh, she, they, 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 she never had voted. And I said, well, God, you, you know. Uh, my dad was a uh, Democrat, and, and I've always been a Democrat. And, and uh, there's no saying that on Facebook it says, uh, uh, says uh, stay poor, you vote Democrat. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, they just tell me, you know, you, you, and they, they voted for the first time this year, both her and her husband. Yes. Wow. It, and she's 39 years old, you know. Uh, but... Um, you know, yes, it, it is. It is very important, uh, and you know, there's people who uh, don't vote. You know, and I tell them, you know, it's just uh, they need they need to get need to start uh, doing. It. I mean, they need to vote. You know, we, they say, well, it doesn't count. And says, well, yes, it does. You know, it counts uh, uh, towards the elective, you know, you can get, or did the uh, delegates, you know, you can get your delegates, and it's, it's sort it, 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 it ends up doing good. Yeah. So, uh, they, they, they uh, uh, you know, still some of the people don't vote and stuff, but some of them do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had the chance to go back, would you still participate in the walkout, even knowing that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, um, 
there was maybe some things that would have been changed differently, I guess. But uh, like what? Well, the um, I guess the, uh, the timing of it, or not the timing, but uh, we could uh, just uh, reinforce it a little bit more. We would have not had to wait that long for it to be approved or uh, concluded as a lawsuit. I mean, we, we, we could have finished it up, you know, uh, participating a little bit more. And, uh, we didn't have the uh, le leadership that we, uh, uh, plus we actually didn't need it actually, uh, uh, because it, it, it was an important event, an important thing, but uh, it, it, it could have been taken, taken uh, you know, I think a little. But then again, it probably would have involved, maybe get involved in, in uh, you know, uh, confrontations and stuff. And, and uh, that was what we didn't do. And, and, and that was what I'm, what I'm, you know, personally proud of that we didn't do that. Uh, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we use the Constitution and, and to express our opinion, and, and we, we did it in a peaceful way, and, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of that, and, you know, and we did put, push our point across. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you coming out today. Okay. Yes, ma'am.